last lecture we have discussed the Cauchy integral theorem and the Cauchy integral theorem says if the function is analytic in a simply connected domain D then for every simple closed curve C lying inside the integral of the function f z d z along this curve C will be 0. This is the Cauchy integral theorem and as a consequence of this we have already proved as a consequence consequence to this problem right, that uh, the line integral is in bend of path. If the function f z is analytic, uh, if the function f z is analytic in a simply connected domain D, in a simply connected domain D, then the integral of f z, then integral of f z d z is independent of path, independent of path in D. That is, if D is this simply connected domain and function f is analytic at each point a, then if we independent of one means if we picked up the two point z1, z0 and z1 suppose, then integral of this function f z d z from z0 to z1 will depends only at the point z1 and z0 but does not depend on the path of integration. Whatever the path you choose, joining these two point the value of the integral will remain the same. So, this comes out as a consequence of uh, the Cauchy integral theorem or an application to Cauchy integral theorem. So, this much then further uh, deformation of path is also another use uh, from Cauchy integral theorem one can drive deformation of path. The deformation of path we mean suppose we have this curve say z0 and z1 not be the two points and this is the path of integration c. Since function f is analytic inside this domain d which is simply connected domain, then the value of the integral f z d will depends only the point z0 and z1 independent of the path. It means if we take any other path joining the z0 to z1 then the value of the line integral will not change. So, we can think that this c path, this is suppose c star, then if I consider infinitely many path joining point z0 to z1 in such a way that it keeps on reducing and change and going up to the c. In this process, the point z0 and z1 is fixed, means the path will always join the z0 and z1, but it approaches towards C and the point through which this curve passes where the function should be analytic. So, if the function is analytic throughout this domain, means whatever the path you choose, it will independent of the integral will independent of the path. So, the c star when it touches to c the value of the c star along c star and value of along uh, integral of the function along c will remain the same and this is called the deformation of the path. This is it means if the path is given in a very uh, uncomfortable way then one can transfer it c star to a comfortable path provided the initial and terminal points are intact and the function is analytic throughout this process. So, this will give the relation. Uh, for uh, let us see the example for this. Suppose we have uh, this curve. Let us Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, we will see the example afterward. Let's see first. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Now, one more lizard which we have mentioned earlier, the existence of definite indefinite integral. This we will just state without the proof. What this says if the function f z is analytic in a simply connected domain D, D then there exist there exist an indefinite integral. capital F z of a small f z in D in D such that f prime z equal to f z which is analytic f is analytic. So, f prime z is also analytic in D in D and for all path in D and for all path in D joining any two points Z naught and Z 1 in D the integral integral f z d z z naught to z 1 can be evaluated with the help of this uh, t f of z t d z by d t d t when t varies from t naught to t 1 and uh, uh, t varies from sorry a to b t varies from a to b and t lying between a to b z naught is corresponding to point t of uh, a z naught the which is z of t t j and z 1 correspond to the point b. So, this is the. So, we can get the value of this line integral in terms of the definite integral from a to b f of z t d t d t. We have already used this part, but the existence of is guaranteed because of this chart. If function is analytic, then definitely the derivative of this function, this integral will exist and equal to the f prime antiderivative. Proofs we are not giving because this is okay. Now, we have seen the Cauchy integral theorem in case of a simply connected domain, but if the domain is not simply connected, then also, we have a Cauchy theorem for multiple connected domains. What we do is here we convert the multiple connected domain into a simply connected domain first and then apply the Cauchy theorem uh, for the simply connectedness. So, the result is Cauchy theorem, Cauchy's theorem for multiple. multiple connected domain multiple connected domains ok. Uh, suppose we have a function let f z be uh, f z is analytic let f z be analytic in a domain d star d star that contains that contains the domain d 
and its boundary curves. Boundary curves C1 and C2 as in figure as in figure okay figure a that suppose this is our uh, d star this dome this is our d contains between the two curves c1 and c2 in between this is the domain d and d star is the domain which contains the points of D as well as the point of the boundaries C1 and C2. So, basically D star is a multiple connected domain, it is not a simply connected domain, okay? multiple connected domain. So, so, D star is a doubly connected or multiple connect, doubly connected domain, is it not? because this has a two boundaries and this this portion is not there simply connect. Then this theorem says then the a Cauchy theorem Cauchy theorem for the multiplication says then Cauchy theorem say give that integral along the curve C 1 of the function f z d z will be the same as integral of the function f z d z along the path C 2, where both integrals both integrals uh, are taking either counterclockwise or clockwise clock counterclockwise or clockwise means same direction both are taken. Okay. So, this is the Cauchy theorem for a multiple connector that is the value of the line integral along the outer boundary is the same as the value of the uh, line integral along the inner boundary when the direction is the same. Okay. So, let us see <laughs> uh, C1 and C2. Okay, then what we say is uh, okay. Proof is simple. Suppose we have a multiple connected domain which has these two boundary, say C one and C two. So this is our C one uh, and here is C two, and D is this domain with it. Now this is the domain D star which is D union the boundary points C 1 and C 2. So, this is our domain D. Now, let us convert this thing into a simply connected domain by putting the two cuts along this. So, this is our one cut. So, if we start through this way, come back up to here and then go from here along this direction and then come back this way again this direction, then you are getting one domain say D 1. Then similarly, when you are going along this direction, come back through this way and again this direction up to here, then come back and get like this. So, we get D 2 another. It means the D star now has been break up into the two domain D 1 and D 2 and both are simply connected domains. So, this is our now here when the path C 1 and C 2 are same is it not then direction is the same, but here the direction reverses. Okay. So, that we will take care for it. Uh, so, what we have the D star is nothing but the D in union D 2 and both D 1 and D 2 are simply connected domains. So, we can apply the Cauchy theorem for this. Therefore, the line integral of the function f z d z along the path along the path 
this that is this value c 2 this is c 2. So, if I go along this path c 2 come back this way and then come here. So, let us see the path this is c 1 uh, sorry uh, let us c 1 dash or c dash path c dash this along over the curve over the domain over the domain d 1 and then the integral of the function f z d z over the domain d 2 d 2 where the boundary is this c 2 plus this plus this and going like this. So, when we consider this integral along this closed boundary and function is analytic the value of this will be 0 value of this will be 0 and total is 0. So, we get from here is the integral along c dash f z d z is the integral minus times of integral along f z d z c double dash. Okay. The value of the integral along this curves that is this side and this side get cancelled. Similarly, this side and this side are opposite. So, the value of the integral along these two cuts will not contribute, it will be 0. So, we do not have at the value either added or subtracted over the arc this c 1 which we call it as c 1 dash delta and here is c 2 dash uh, c double dash delta this one. Okay. So, we do not have. Now, c dash is this curve where this direction is taking in this way that is the direction is opposite to the direction which we are taking earlier c 1 is this direction and it is opposite this is going opposite of this. So, this becomes the minus of c 1. So, this is equal to this becomes equal to minus of c 1 f z d z equal to minus now c 2 dash c, <coughs> c double dash is the curve along this uh, integral along this curve. So, the direction is the same as c 2 basically it is a part of the c 2 plus this c double dash, but these are all 0. So, except c 2 it will come. So, c 2 plus this curve c 2 plus this. So, basically this we are getting uh, uh, this uh, c 2 uh, I am so this one c dash is completely this the 0. So, c dash is what we are getting this uh, curve here c 2 plus this c 1. So, here c 2 will also come c 2 f z d z part of it in d 2 in d 1 and this will come the c 2 in d 2 in d 2 okay, in that d 2 plus this portion which is the opposite of this. So, opposite of this means plus of this c 1 f z d z because this is opposite to this opposite to this. So, it is c 1. So, part in d 2 this is also in d 1. So, this is the portion lying in d 1 this portion this portion is lying in d 2. So, if we combine these two transfer then this is the total c 1. So, this implies that integral along c 2 f z d z is integral along c 1 f z d z that is proves the result. Okay. Is it okay or, yeah? or just I will again repeat what we did. We wanted to prove that integral of the function along the outer boundary is the same as the integral along the inner boundary when the direction is taken same. So, what we did we have made the two cuts. So, by making these two cuts the entire domain d is divided into two part d 1 and d 2. Now, d 1 consists of a part of the c 2 arc and the arc c 1 days is tall days these arc. Then d 2 consists the boundary consists of a part of c 2 and c double days arc. So, the value of this integral is 0 means the value along this plus value along this must be 0. 
similarly the value of this it means value along c2 and this two are zero but these two are opposite these two are opposite and the same path function is same so the value will not contribute therefore the value of the integral along outer boundary is the same as the value along the inner boundary and that's proves the richard pole okay so that is now this can be extended in general suppose there are this is our domain where there are many holes are there say this holes okay so it is a multiple connected domains and the boundaries are c1 here c this is the boundary is say c1 this is the boundary is say c2 this is the boundary is c3 same direction then the line integral of the function fz dz along c will be the same as the line integral of the function fz dz along c1 plus line integral of the function fz dz along c2 plus the line integral of the function fz along c now c1 and c this direction of c and direction of c1 c2 c3 must be the same either both same clockwise or maybe the anti clockwise it hardly matters and this so now before going for this some more examples here let us see the first which is interesting example to find the value of this integral because it will be used dz z minus z not to the power m dz over the c where c is the circle sent uh, any closed curve uh, circle uh, mod z uh, circle z minus z not z minus z not is equal to say r okay B this we wanted to show prove it so it is given z minus z not is r e to the power i theta where theta lying between 0 and 2 pi because it is a circular path centered at z not with a radius r so any arbitrary point z if i take it then z can be written as z not plus r so dz will be equal to r i e to the power i theta d theta and therefore the integral z minus z not to the power m dz along this path c uh, will be z minus z not is r to the power m e to the power i m theta divided by uh, no divide then dz is r i r i e to the power uh, r i e to the power i theta d theta ok. Now, when we and value is 0 to 2 pi. So, basically it becomes i r m plus 1 integral 0 to 2 pi e to the power i m plus 1 theta d theta is it not and this value will come out to be i r m plus 1 e to the power i m plus 1 divided by i m plus 1 and limit 0 to 2 pi theta. So, the value of uh, e to the power i some constant theta 2 pi will be 1 and at the point 0 is also 1. So, the value will come out to be 0 if m is different from minus 1, but when m is minus 1 then we have to evaluate this integral separately and we get z minus z naught along the path c we are the c is this circle z minus z naught is r ok. So, if I evaluate this uh, the value will come out to be uh, z minus z naught is r e to the power i theta dz is equal to r i e to the power i theta d theta and 0 to 2 pi the value will come out to be 2 pi i. So, this result says the value of this integral will be 0 when m is different from minus 1 and equal to 2 pi i when m is equal to minus 1. This will be used for the, ok. <laughs> now, as we have seen that uh, few examples we will go for this. 
suppose we have evolute the integral z over 1 plus z square dz along the path c where c is the upper where c is the upper uh, c is the upper semicircle upper semicircle mod z plus half equal to half. Semi, upper semicircle is the upper part of the semicircle of the semicircle z plus okay like travels travels in the anti clockwise direction using deformation of path deformation of the path now <laughs> if we look this uh, circle the circle is basically centered at minus half with the radius half so it will be the this path and traverse in the anti clock by direction so we are moving in this direction clear now this is our zero the function f z which is z over 1 plus z square cease to be analytic ceases to be analytic that is it is not defined all derivatives are not exist cease to be analytic at the point where the denominator is 0 z equal to plus minus i and plus minus i will be somewhere lying here this is plus i this is minus i. So, it does not fall at any point on this circle on the path of integration this is path of integration. Therefore, if I join these two point I kept it as it is this is 0 this is 1 if I kept these two point intact and draw the curves joining these two points then the integral along this curve will be the same as the integral along this curve because the function is analytic throughout all the point and the joint initial and terminal point are intact. So, if I keep on changing then I should I will take only the simplest path and simplest path is this from 0 to 1 along x axis. So, here choose x axis and x axis the path c this is the path c can be replaced by the line segment o a this is suppose a o this is a o a along x axis whose parametric equation is z t equal to x t plus by t. So, x t that is t by 0. So, t varies from minus 1 to 0 oh sorry 0 to minus 1. Why 0 to 1? Because the direction is taken in anti clock price 0 to minus 1. Okay. So, if I take z t equal to t then t varies from 0 to say minus 1 this is minus 1 I am sorry this is minus 1 then 0 to minus 1 then integral along this path c can be replaced by uh, the integral of the function along the x axis along the line segment uh, o a which is on the x axis joining o to a. So, this integral i reduces to the integral z equal to t. So, replace t over 1 plus t square dt and minus 1 to 0. Okay? And this value will can be easily integrated because t 1 plus t square if I put it to be t then 
we are getting this value is coming to be half log 2. So, by using the deformation of the path one can easily get the integral or one can change this path of integration suitably and get the result. Okay. Now, let us take few other uh, evolute using the Cauchy theorem for multiple connected domains. Okay. Evolute this integral i along the path c of the function t z minus 1 <coughs> over z q minus z d z, where c is the contour is the contour close curve edge shown in figure figure a the figure is <coughs> suppose we have this this curve c is the path of integration like this this is our c this c which encloses the point minus 1 0 and 1 these are the points we are interested in finding the value of the line integral of this function along this path along this closed curve c is the closed curve now if i look the domain which is inside this closed curve c then you see the function f is not analytic at this point since the function f z which is t z minus 1 z z square minus 1 cease to be analytic at the point z is equal to 0 z equal to 1 and z equal to minus 1. So, these are the three points where it ceases to be anal uh, analytic means the function is not defined at this point because the denominator vanishes at this point. Okay. So, we have to remove this point because the function is not analytic. So, if I consider the domain which is free from these points that is 0, minus 1, 1 just draw these circles centered at 1, centered at 0 and centered at 1, minus 1. If I draw these curves which are say C 1, say C 1, C 2, C 3, these are the closed curve which encloses the point 1, 0 and minus 1 respectively. So, if I look this domain, domain, then this domain and the boundary is this C, this is the boundary of this one. Then this entire domain becomes basically a simply connected if I drop this, uh, sorry, multiple connected because it has a uh, gaps these holes are there, three holes are there. So, this entire domain is a multiple connected domain. So, by Cauchy theorem, the value of the function f z, this function now 3 z minus 1 over z cube minus z, this function if you take the function is not analytic at this point. So, if I remove this point, then for the rest of the function is analytic. So, by Cauchy theorem, the value of the integral the value of the integral of this curve dz along the path c is the same as the value of this function along c1 plus value of the function along c2 plus value of the function along c3 is it not so we get this now c1 c2 c3 let us compute separately so let it be 1 okay now what is our c1 
C 1 is that uh, first is function f z this is 3 z minus 1 z z square minus 1. So, we can if we uh, write the partial fraction for this the partial fraction will come out to be 1 by z minus 2 by z plus 1 plus 1 over z minus this is just simple z minus z and write down the partial fraction we get this. So, integral along c 1 f z d z this is equal to now uh, integral along c uh, c 1 yes what is the c 1 is integral along c 1 this is integral along c 1 1 by z d z minus 2 times integral of this along c 1 plus integral of this along c 1. But what is c 1? c 1 is this curve which encloses the point z equal to 1 and 0 and minus 1 outside. So, if we look the function f z which is 3 z minus 1 over z z square minus 1. So, in this case the function f z which can be written as 3 z minus 1 over z z minus 1 z plus 1. So, if we look this function z plus uh, this uh, point z plus 1 this point is no longer in uh, yeah this point z equal to 0. 0 is not included inside c 1. So, the value of this integral will be 0 because it becomes analytic is it not 1 by z d z z equal to 0 is the point with a singular point, but inside the c 1 0 is not there 0 lying outside. So, function f z 1 by z becomes analytic. So, in integral Cauchy integral theorem says the value of this integral must be 0. Then z plus 1 z equal to minus 1 again z equal to minus 1 lying outside. So, again the value will be 0, but for this z equal to 1 lies inside. So, once it inside lie then with the value of this integral is nothing but the value of dz over z minus 1, but we have already seen one example where the value is coming to be this yeah z minus z naught to the power m the when m is minus 1 the value is 2 pi i. So, the value of this integral will be equal to 2 pi i. Okay. Then integral along c 2 f z d z in a similar way we can say c 2 1 by z z 2 d z over z plus 1 then plus d z over z minus 1. What where is the c 2? c 2 is the point which encloses 0. So, minus 1 and plus 1 is out. So, it means z plus 1 or z minus 1 1 by z plus 1 or z minus 1 becomes analytic becomes analytic. So, these are 0 these are 0 and this z equal to 0 will give only the value which is just if you compute z equal to all e to the pi theta etcetera the value will come out to be 2 pi. So, here the value will also come out to be 2 pi. Okay. Now, third case when it is integral c 3 f z d z c 3 is now this is our z c 3 z plus 1. So, z plus 1 this will give the value. Uh, so, this will give the value rest all 0 except this others will be 0 and this is nothing but minus 1 plus 1. So, the value will come out to be minus d z over z minus minus 1 that is the same as z minus z naught. So, again the value will be 2 pi. So, it is minus 2 pi i and multiply by 2 is it not. So, this is minus this sorry here this. So, it is equal to minus 4 pi i. So, what we get it here the integral along the closed boundary. So, we get according to the first. So, first stage. Uh, so, from first integral of this function along the outer boundary c is the sum of the integral along c 1 c 2 c 3. Therefore, the sum value will be 
2 pi i plus 2 pi i minus 4 pi and that comes out to be 0. So, that will be the one. Okay. So, this will be our. Now, okay. let us take uh, one more problems that is uh, Kochi. Okay. Now, we have uh, another application of the Cauchy integral theorem, uh, Cauchy integral theorem is the Cauchy integral formula. The Cauchy integral formula, this is uh, the consequence of the Cauchy integral theorem, it is a consequence of the uh, which says the value of the function at a point j naught inside the domain d where the function is analytic can be computed. So, what is that coach integral let f z be analytic in a simply connected domain in a simply connected domain d. in a simply connected domain D, then, then for any point Z naught in D and any simple closed path simple closed path C in D that encloses that encloses the point Z naught the value of the integral F Z over Z minus Z naught D Z along this path C equal to 2 pi i times the value of the function F Z naught the integration is being taken integration being taken taking counterclockwise strikes counterclockwise so it means if we are interested finding the value of this is uh, like this if suppose if the fz be a analytic in a simply connected domain d <coughs> which has a point z naught inside this take any simple closed curve path c in d which encloses the point z naught then the value of this integral fz over z minus z naught along the path c will be 2 pi a times the value of the function at z naught it so in other words you can say that if we are interested finding the value of a function f at an arbitrary point z naught in a domain d where the function is analytic then you simply consider calculate the integral of f z minus f z f z over z minus z naught along any simple closed curve c which encloses the point z naught multiply this by 2 pi i sorry uh, uh, divide by this 2 pi i divide this by 2 pi i then this will give the value of the function at a point z naught ok the proof of this uh, uh, we will see the proof but let us see uh, the uh, advantage of this is the advantage is that suppose we wanted to calculate the say integral of this function say z cube minus 6 over say 2 z minus i. Suppose we wanted to compute this integral then what we do is and c is the where c is the circle mod z minus uh, 
half and this is the i by 2 uh, z naught is inside the circuit z, z naught by i by 2 a central is i by 2 with a radius say 1. Okay. So, if we consider this circuit centered at i by 2 with radius say 1 okay, with radius say 1 then what we get is uh, that this function z cube by 6 over 2 z minus i cease to be analytic at z equal to i. So, but the function z cube by 6 here the function f z which is z cube by minus 6 by 2 this function is analytic is analytic inside the curve c inside the curve c and it has a point i by 2 inside. So, as a whole the function is not analytic at z equal to i by 2, but if you look this function is analytic inside the curve z minus i by 2 is less than equal to 1 clear and what this theorem says is if the function f is analytic inside the domain d or inside the curve c, then the f z over z minus z naught the value of this integral along curve c will be this much. So, basically this is can be written like this the integral c z cube minus 6 2 z minus i d z can be written as integral z cube minus 6 by 2 over z minus i by 2 d z along the path c <coughs> and c is this circle. So, c is the circle z minus i by 2 is 1. Therefore, by this Cauchy integral theorem the value of this integral will be 2 pi i times 2 pi i times uh, the value of this integral is value of the function at z naught value of the function f at the point z naught z naught is what point? z naught is i by 2 i by 2. So, this comes out to be 2 pi i z q minus 6 by 2 at the point z equal to i by 2 and if we compute z uh, uh, by this the value will come out to be uh, say minus a pi by 8 minus 6 pi i. Okay. So, this is what another examples also let us consider the curve find the integral c z square plus 1 over z square minus 1 d z along the path c where the direction is taking counter clockwise where c is given as in figure. Suppose we have the first case C is this circuit, this is the uh, 0, here is minus 1, this is 1. Suppose this is our C, C is this curve, closed curve surrounding the point 1. So, if we take the curve c surrounding this point then what happens the function z square plus 1 over z square minus 1 cease to be analytic at z equal to 1. But if we consider this function as the integral z square plus 1 over z plus 1 divided by z minus 1 dz. Suppose I rewrite this function into this form along the path c, then this part of the function the numerator is analytic throughout this analytic throughout. and this function which is analytic inside the c and having the point 1 inside this curve c, c encloses the point 1. 
So I apply the Cauchy integral formula. The Cauchy integral formula says the value of this will be 2 pi i times the function f z at z is equal to z naught that is 1. So, you can find out the value of this integral and get this value comes out to be 2 pi i because 1 plus 1 get hence 2 pi i. Now, in the second case if suppose I <coughs> second part if I shifted this into uh, curve and we get this curve we get this curve suppose I shift it here say minus 1 1 and I shift it like this uh, say like this ok. This curve C this is the curve C where minus 1 included and 1 is outside. So, the same integral along this curve z square plus 1 z minus 1 z plus 1 dz we can rewrite like this z square plus 1 z minus 1 is there. So, z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 dz along the path c because the function is throughout analytic except the point z equal to minus 1. So, that point I am taking below. So, it is f z over z minus. So, this function is analytic inside this curve c. So, by integral through uh, Cauchy integral formula 2 pi i times the value of this at z is equal to minus 1 and that value will come out to be minus 2 pi i. And suppose it encloses both the points then you apply the Cauchy integral for, uh, formula uh, integral theorem for the multiple connected domains and the value will or if we take this integral minus 1 to 1 and this is the curve c then the value of this integral f z will be 0 because the function is throughout analytic. So, the value will come out to be 0. So, that is the advantage of computing the integrals by just manipulating the whole function. Thank you very much. Thanks. <coughs>